Thank you very much, everybody. And I think I can, there it is. Going back now, my uh, presentation is leadership in blockchain, and this is really the ambition for the European Union. We intend to be a leader, obviously, with China and the United States, especially Silicon Valley, but also New York City and the US. Uh, we're moving on the fronts of innovation, infrastructure, not only legislation. Uh, we're aiming to establish this global leadership, and this isn't leadership alone, as I say, this is with the other big trading blocks in the world. With a joined up political vision, we have a European blockchain partnership of all 27 member states, Norway and Liechtenstein, working together. They signed a declaration at the ministerial level, which is moving to implementation that I'll tell you about, with the European blockchain services infrastructure, cross-border public services across these 29 countries. The the UK was mentioned, the UK did also sign at ministerial level, but now they have left European Union activities, so the attention was there. We were 30 countries. We also have a public-private partnership. We work with the International Association of Trusted Blockchain Applications, a private sector stakeholder organization. The previous speaker is, is active there, among other uh, amazing things that he's doing. And with the European Blockchain Observatory and Forum, which is open to all of you uh, to take part in either online or in workshops. Uh, we work together to have global expertise. There you have people also from the US and Japan and Canada and other places. In fact, the edition we have right now is run by Consensus, the big blockchain company, which is kind of in Switzerland and France and Canadian and, and in Brooklyn, New York as well. So again, very global. We're investing in research, innovation, and startups. Uh, Startup EU, Startup Europe is also in my unit, not confirm, um, confined to blockchain, but dealing with all kinds of digital startups, but I mean blockchain is a, a very interesting part with other types of deep tech. And we're also promoting an enabling digital single market legal framework. That's where, as a regulator comes in, we come in. And we right now have a uh, digital assets public consultation open. So please respond if you're interested in investment tokens, payment tokens, utility tokens to run decentralized systems with our colleagues in DG FISMA, which is the financial mar markets part of the commission. We're working together to have, hopefully, by the end of uh, this year, a pro-innovation piece of legislation, if that is what the public consultation and our political leaders indicate, um, that will help give legal clarity to this field. Uh, skills development as well. We have a big skills program in the Digital Europe program. And also, we're looking to make sure that there can be mutual recognition of smart contracts across the whole digital single market and that you don't have fragmentation. A little bit more broadly, we think that both artificial intelligence and blockchain are foundational technologies. They're deep tech. They're really going to set up the uh, digital transformation of tomorrow. We're investing in them both, and our vision is one that you can also say is of convergence. We see data coming from IoT being organized and standardized, checked for quality in uh, blockchain systems, being delivered, for instance, to artificial intelligence for analysis, and being attributed or managed again by individual citizens in terms of the result by blockchain, other technologies. Again, we're not stuck only on blockchain, we think it's a great technology for especially uh, use cases where you have multiple stakeholders that don't want to or legally can't share a single database. But for other things, AI is essential, IoT is coming up, Internet of Things. So, I mean, this is a vision. Uh, we also have an artificial intelligence declaration signed by all 28 uh, EU members, 27, I have to change that. In both cases, we have to take it down to 27. As I said, unfortunately, it's not our wish. Uh, investments in AI and blockchain. We have an AI blockchain investment fund. This will be venture capital money going out through the European Investment Fund. 100 million euro this year, the public contribution. We aim for it to be leveraged to 300 million, uh, depending what happens in the budget discussions in, in Brussels right now with the, the heads of state. Hopefully this will rise with every year. Uh, obviously this is not the whole field, but giving a push to scaling up and risky early investment 
investments. We want to have the public behind it. It's a bit of the story as well uh, behind the Silicon Valley story of venture capital of the SBIC setting up uh, a lot of these early venture capital firms. And we're intending to support it as well from the public sector side. And this is uh, the further funding is coming through this Invest EU program. We want to incentivize the further private sector investments. What came out when I made this presentation, I couldn't say anything about these strategies because they hadn't publicly been released yet, so my slide is fairly conservative. But we have a data strategy that just came out. There is a, a box, an action, that foresees self-determination and individualized data management by blockchain. Uh, again, moving to real data portability. A lot of you know that uh, the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, has an article providing for data portability. It hasn't really been used. There's both a legal question, the way the article is drafted, that it gives a lot of time for a platform, for instance, to give access to the data to move it. And technically, it has not been so easy to do. We want to really put the emerging technologies behind making data portability something that is in the hands of every individual citizen, of every individual enterprise. And then you also also have industrial data spaces, which is quite interesting, but I don't have time to go into it at the moment. A digital strategy, which also points to a quantum strategy and a blockchain strategy, which we're going to issue in the second quarter of this year. This is April, May in our uh, Brussels language. And um, also a uh, strategy on standardization, digital standardization, seeing again how Europe can play a, a strong role there, again, with China and the US without uh, question, but play a strong role for our enterprises in areas like 5G, AI, blockchain. My own unit represents the European Commission and International Standardization Organization Technical Committee 307, uh, smart contracts, governance, infrastructures, these are all issues. And a white paper, and a white paper means it's also a public consultation on artificial intelligence. The investment part, which is partially in my portfolio, but also issues on legal frameworks and collaboration in the areas of artificial intelligence. As you can see on the emerging technologies in general, uh, it's part of our industrial policy. We are enthusiastic about them. We are aiming to invest and roll them out in Europe rapidly. Um, but the idea is that Europe can be a best or the best place for adopting the emerging technologies, but also adapting them. We think the technologies are for the economy, for the society, for citizens. We are not for the technologies. So it's using them, making the best opportunities, but making sure that if there's areas, let's say, facial recognition of everyone on the street, that if this is not acceptable democratically to Europe, then these kinds of technologies will not be used by our police forces and other surveillance. Uh, the blockchain partnership, a few more words. Uh, there's a declaration saying that we're behind utilizing this technology, especially where it reflects for us the multi-level governance of the EU. I'll say a few words later, we're also for the very decentralized blockchains, and we're looking for ways that we can have a legal framework that allows them to work and flourish in Europe. But this is, how to say, a middle level of decentralization. This is instead of having one database in Brussels or Luxembourg, that actually all the member states, 27 now, Norway, Liechtenstein, Ideally, in the future, the regions of Europe and the cities will all have nodes operating on this a public blockchain infrastructure for delivery of public services. Some of the services that are coming up already this year, court of auditor document certification, uh, audit information which should be public for everyone on the way that European Union and public money is being spent. Next, we'll have uh, regulatory reporting on value-added taxes and on custom excises. This is efficiency. It's aiming to save the budget uh, 30 to 80 percent. These are not huge budgets, but these savings like this should be utilized if a technology can provide it. And further, then we're aiming, which is more complicated, more at the individual citizens, uh, diploma certification. This is something also even at this conference we've heard about, and we hear anecdotally about people going to Canada, people going between the member states of the EU, still needing to take the paper diplomas with them, diplomas being faked. This is one of the use cases. 
Technically, it's quite close to being ready, but what's going to take time there is getting the universities enrolled, getting the, how to say, complete agreement on what data will go into uh, the, how to say, not the blockchain, the hashes will be on the blockchain, but that can be linked to what data is necessary for others to recognize the information in the diplomas. And then finally, and maybe most excitedly, uh, exciting, uh, self-sovereign identity. So not just your official identity that you need to, to pay taxes or register a child for school, et cetera, but your fuller identity that reflects your life, your career, what you want to have in one place and manage the data. This obviously connects very closely to the decentralized uh, data management, and it's something that we think fits the democratic nature of the European Union, the individual rights of citizens, and giving them this kind of control. This is, again, is more complicated. It has to be linked to the official identity for this identity to be useful so that you don't have to have separate ones. And at the same time, it has to be something that works across blockchains and probably with legacy systems. So it's happening and it's underway um, and it's exciting, but there's still some work to do. So we've moved from 22 members to 29 members. Uh, we're utilizing, to get into a little bit of the, the lingo and budgetary discussion, the Connecting Europe facility. This will move into the Digital Europe program, which is our 9 billion euro program for implementing artificial intelligence, AI, high-performance computing to make sure that Europe stays competitive globally and we have the opportunities for startups to have a technological base to utilize, both in the cases of AI, blockchain, um, as well as in high-performance computing, the uh, proposal is very much to give access to these technologies as well as to startups and not just, let's say, where the supercomputers are, where exactly the node is, but really across the EU. Uh, the European Blockchain Partnership also, which is quite interesting, it is working as a regulatory sandbox with all the member states and, uh, and Norway and Liechtenstein because these are things that are not foreseen in the law. That's the fact that it's not foreseen. I mean, we really don't have the attitude in Europe that that makes it uh, prohibited. But at the same time, people do have some questions. Does this count? Is this a real diploma if it's registered on the blockchain? Or do you still need to show the paper one? So there are things that we have to work through. It may require changes in legislation. I mentioned the digital assets. Smart contracts possibly as well, maybe some small changes in, in legislation on uh, electronic contracts, on e-commerce. Um, or might just require certain experimentation and a spirit of flexibility or some guidelines. But so we're working on this technically because we're building this infrastructure. Uh, also, for those of you who are on the technical side, on the blockchain side, we have a pre-commercial procurement right now open uh, for 8 million euro, which is uh, having an open market consultation, 11th and 13th of March. So we're buying things from the market. We're obviously not uh, us, I'm a lawyer myself, uh, programming this our, ourselves and trying to build some completely new blockchain. We're buying and adapting the best on the market, intending this to be a very green blockchain in terms of the consensus mechanisms, a very secure one, a fast one, and one that can scale. Uh, this is the European Blockchain Observatory and Forum. It's about to be renewed, so there'll be a new consortium running it. I mentioned the digital assets uh, report, which actually just came out uh, the day before I traveled here, so it's not even on this slide yet. All these reports are available to you if you're interested in issues like GDPR and the blockchain, uh, e-government and the blockchain, e um, interoperability, discussions on workshops. We have a workshop coming up on the 5th of March on energy and the blockchain in Brussels. Everyone's welcome until the room is filled so you can register online. And also a final workshop for this uh, um, observatory. And then it'll be renewed. There's experts from Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia active. And I should have said, uh, it's kind of obvious in the blockchain partnership, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Finland, Poland, etc. everybody's in there. Uh, Semi-finally now, uh, these are the considerations that we have on smart contracts and the digital assets, which we also call tokenization. On both of these areas, this is the time now to give us your point of view, because listening to the stakeholders, listening to the member states is essential for us. 
Uh, we have the public consultation on digital assets open right now. There'll be one on digital finance on FinTech open soon. There'll be one on the Digital Services Act open soon. And we're also preparing the blockchain strategy. So on these issues and others, if you're seeing in the field issues, a lack of legal clarity, we know there, there exists such a, such a problem sometimes, on smart contracts, tokenization, other things to do with blockchain, fintech, we want to hear from you. And we want to make sure that even when we are uh, preparing legislation in a pro-innovation spirit, which is very much the idea right now, to act as a launching pad for these technologies to take off in Europe, that we get things right, that you tell us where there is a problem that we might not be aware of. Hopefully, we're aware of a lot. But uh, how to say, the field, the market always knows uh, more about what's going on in the business than, than we do, which is right. Uh, so we're building on, as well, the opinion of the European um, Banking Authority, the European Security Markets Authority, uh, which analyzed gaps. And a study that we will be publishing from the European Commission uh, probably the next five or six days, uh, depending on a little bit uh, some website and uh, actually paper publishing questions, which still exists and we still utilize paper. Um, and uh, this will lead to this framework to moving forward also on this legislative side, though as I emphasize also in the title of my presentation, it's infrastructure, innovation, and regulation. If it was ever true that if it moves, Europe regulates it, the European uh, Commission regulates it, it isn't true anymore. We've been observing closely, uh, the FinTech Task Force was mentioned, I mean, we've been looking at these issues since about 2012, 2013, perhaps not at the very beginning of blockchain when uh, the Satoshi Nokamoto white paper on Bitcoin was published, but fairly early, so about eight years. So we haven't rushed into having legislation except applying anti-money laundering and other, uh, other uh, requirements to the, the crypto world, to the blockchain world. But now we're looking at what might be a regulatory framework that would be future-proofed. We probably won't even say blockchain because we don't want to lock into it. Decentralized ledger technologies, maybe not DLT as such, or decentralized technologies. Looking at what is really unique with these technologies, which is the either fully decentralized or to some extent decentralized nature and not locking ourselves into a technology like we don't have a uh, regulation on servers or a regulation on transistors, for instance. It should be technology neutral, but at the same time, we want to support the adoption of the technology. Um, with that, there you can find the EU Blockchain Observatory and Forum on Twitter. There you can find me on Twitter. Uh, there you have my email address. Uh, the observatory is glad to answer to you. I'm glad to answer to you when I can directly. And uh, I think I'm either on time or uh, a little bit ahead. So, Ernest, uh, if you have a question to me, or if you want anyone else to have a question to me, I can answer or I can save some time. It's up to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.